Please have a seat. <laughs> that dramatic pause. So here we are, it is Thanksgiving Sunday, and we are able to gather. So as we gather on this day, a day of gratitude, a day of thanksgiving, however you are going to spend it today, may you do so with joy in your heart and and thanksgiving. What else can you say thanksgiving but thanksgiving, right? So let us begin our worship service this morning. I believe it's for the fruit of all creation, but it will appear on the overhead. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Good morning. So welcome one and all to Barhaven United Church. Longtime members or perhaps this is your first Sunday here or watching at home, all are welcome. And it is so good, as I said earlier, that we get to gather and to be present to one another on this day. So it doesn't matter what you have planned, I hope that you find time and to make the time to just to sit and to be present to the wonder that is all around us in this life and, um, and just to be present to whoever is in your life as well. So welcome. As I always 
well, I don't always, but um, life and work is such an important part of our church. And the document that is created and sent out each and every week is, in a way, it's kind of like the backbone of the church. It's a way for us to keep in contact with one another. It's a way for us to learn what, what might be coming up, um, whether it's if baptisms or confirmation classes are going to be held, or if there is a study group that is coming up. So I encourage you each and every week uh, to read Life and Work, maybe to make some notes. And if you don't currently get Life and Work, just to contact Natalie in the church office and she can put you on our mailing list. And you will get it in your inbox each and every week. So we have a very important and interesting project that is coming up, and it's a Callowit Art Supply Project. And I would like to welcome up Casey to share it with us. Once again, this good morning. Once again, this year, the BUC Sunday School and Outreach Ministry will be teaming up with the City View United Church to bring much-needed art and craft supplies to the children of Iqaluit. For the past seven years, City View, City View United Church has been sending creative toys and art and craft supplies to the children in Iqaluit for Christmas. The project was started because of a personal experience a congregation member had while in Iqaluit for work. She was, she was struck by the lack of access many children have to the things our own children take for granted, some as simple as drawing paper and markers. Working with the food bank in Iqaluit, the art and craft supplies are distributed at Christmas and bring many smiles, smiles to many young faces. Last year, BUC raised $300 for supplies for the art, Iqaluit Art Project. This year, we invite you to make donations at the worship service during the offering by placing the donation in the envelope marked Iqaluit Project. You may also drop your envelope through the BUC mail slot on Monday, on Monday, on weekday mornings when someone will be in the office. These donations are much appreciated and may be made up until November 21, 2021. These, the Sunday school will also be having a cupcake fundraiser at the end of the church service for the Callaway Art Project on October 17, 2021. Hope to see you there. Thank you, thank you, Casey. So here we gather. We gather for many reasons, but whatever your reason is to gather here this morning, you are present and that's all that matters. So let us take a few moments of silence to do whatever you need to do to become fully present to this time, this space, to what God has for us on this day. Our service begins with the lighting of the Christ candle. The Christ candle is lit. We are blessed to be in the presence of Christ's spirit. The Christ candle is lit. We come to worship and to honor all that we share as a people searching for the truth. Thanksgiving. 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 So let us enter this place, thanksgiving. giving thanks to Let us worship God. Pay attention. Notice God's wisdom in the wonders of the world. Pay attention. 
Notice in your neighbor the face of Christ. Pay attention. Notice the world through God's eyes and listen to God's call. With praise and thanks we come, O God of all. Amen. I think we have something, somebody pretty special, so as he gets ready to come out, Marlene will get us ready. Bananas, you're just being funny, you're not shy. <laughs> I think you're a little bit of a drama queen. Oh well, that's okay. There's a little one inside of all of us, eh? Yes. <laughs> so here we are, it's Thanksgiving. What's that? It's going to be a different for you this year? What's that? What's that? It's just your, your mom and you and uh, what? You're going to have peanut butter, jelly, and banana sandwiches? That's what you're going to have? Yeah. What's that? You're, you're wondering if it's Thanksgiving with a... Oh, well, you know, bananas, I think it is. But you know what? I think we're going to ask people here to help us out this time with children's time. You think that's good? You think they can be dramatic? Oh, yes, I think so. So, okay, so I'm going to ask a question, and then you're going to say, it's still Thanksgiving. All right, you're going to try it? So let's just practice. So one, two, three. It's still Thanksgiving. Okay, all right. Are, are you ready, Bananas? Yeah? So, okay, so if there is no turkey. It's still if there's no pumpkin pie. If there's no stuffing? It's still Thanksgiving. <gasps> if there's no cranberries? It's still Thanksgiving. You know what? I don't think cranberries is on the list of people's top five fruits anyway, really. Maybe up there with raisins. Mm -hmm. I heard someone puts raisins in their stuffing. Ooh, I draw a line there. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's right. Well, you know, bananas. It doesn't matter if you're gathering in person or if maybe you're going to call somebody on the phone or Skype or Zoom or, or send a little email to somebody or maybe if you're out for a walk and, someone's wa and you wave to them or maybe if they're even taking out the trash and you wave to them. You know, make every moment a chance of giving thanks, an opportunity for giving thanks. So it doesn't matter if you gather with a whole bunch of people around the table or if there's just you and your mom, you take the time to say thank you. Yeah, and you know what? It's scientifically proven that you will feel better in your heart. It's true if you take the time to be grateful. And you know what? Throughout the Bible, um, from the very beginning, God's people always took the time and made the time to give thanks. So Thanksgiving isn't just a day or isn't about food or having certain clothes to wear. Every day can be Thanksgiving. Yeah? Is that, is that makes you happy? Mm-hmm. And what's that? 
You're actually looking forward to your sandwiches tonight for supper? Oh, maybe you can try cranberries on them instead. That might be, I don't know if that would work with peanut butter. But you know what? Cheese Whiz and peanut butter is really good. Don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> it's very good. Anyway, so yeah. So how about we have a little prayer before we get back? Okay? Okay. So put your paws together and bow your head and repeat after me. Loving God, thank you for making me. Thank you for making the person on my right and the person on my left. May we make each day a day of thanksgiving and turn over to you the things we can't carry on our own. With thanks we pray, in Jesus' name, amen. God of Moses and Miriam, God of all our journeys, in the dry places of our lives, we thirst for meaning, for justice, but most of all, for your presence. Be with us now in our worship as we seek the living waters of your word for us today. Amen. I invite you to join with me in a responsive reading of Psalm 126, it can be found on page 850 of Voices United. We will be using the second refrain for the sung part. Or not. <laughs> we praise the one who gave the growth with voices full and strong. Sorry. <laughs> White God. It's too many different places. <laughs> when God brought Zion's captives home, it seemed to us like a dream. But when our mouths were full of laughter and our tongues uttered shouts of joy, then they said among the nations, God has done great things for them. Truly God has done great things for us, and therefore we rejoice. We praise the one who gave the growth with voices full and strong. Restore our fortunes, O God, as streams refresh the Negev. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed for sowing. We praise the one who gave the growth with voices full and strong. Our second reading is from the letter of First Timothy. Chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings should be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to know the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. 
For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. Our last reading is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 to 33. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. May God challenge and change us through the hearing of the word. Thanks be to God. I invite you, let us pray. Living God, as we hear stories and accounts that happened so long ago, may they spring to life in new ways for us. May we experience your presence anew in scripture, in creation, and in our own, our very lives. May we always be seeking to know you and love you in new ways. With Jesus as our guide and companion, we ask this. Amen. It probably happened a few months ago and was probably delivered by the Postal Service to people across the country and perhaps and even in other countries. And for some, the address on the envelope gave it away and maybe tore it open to get at the inner contents. Now for others, the address on that envelope may have sent feelings of dread down your spine, ones that made your stomach lurch. It was the invitation to your high school reunion that was being held on Zoom. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but feelings and images jumped into my head. The first thing would be, well, actually not for me because I married my high school sweetheart, but anyway, would my old high school sweetheart be there? And the next line would be, what would he look like? And this would quickly be followed by, well, I've changed a little bit over the years and uh, I don't think I fit into my palm, palm dress, prom dress, but what will people think about me? Perhaps you even pulled out your old high school yearbooks and as you flipped through the pages of basketball, hockey, volleyball photos, you remembered all of your friends. And if you were lucky, you might look at the picture of yourself and your friends and say, what great fashion sense we had. Those large glasses look so good on her. Or I loved his haircut. And oh, what was that haircut called again? Oh yeah, a mullet. There were pictures from winter carnival, track and field events, exchange students from across Canada. And there, right beside your graduation picture into bold print is listed your pet peeves, your favorite quotes, and what you wanted to do in your life. But what was also there, at the very bottom of the list, was what you would probably do, otherwise known as your probable destiny. And that is where you stop cold. That is where your worry sets in. And the questions come tumbling out. Did, did I accomplish the dreams that I had as a teenager? Did I even come close? There is a lot to worry about in this life. Aside from things like climate change, civil unrest, oh yeah, and a pandemic, there are worries about finishing school, getting a job, 
and then hoping that somewhere along the line you won't be downsized and have to go back for upgrading. Or worries about buying the perfect home with the best, thi with the best things to go inside of it and what vehicle will be parked in your driveway only maybe to lose it all later in life to a shady investment broker. There is a lot to worry about. But here in this morning's readings, we have words of encouragement to those of us who worry. Jesus tells his disciples not to worry. Now, if Jesus had been a high school guidance counselor, I doubt if he would last very long at any school. Because after all, he goes around saying, don't worry. Don't worry about your clothing, about your life, your body, what you will eat or how you will live. And this is wonderful advice, but perhaps it's not the best thing to say to your teenager. You know, the one that you're trying to motivate to study for physics or an algebra test. Jesus said that there is something more important than the physical things around us. There is something that is worth more than the money that we have in our bank account a degree that hangs on the wall or the 4 by 4 truck in the driveway. It is the feeling of contentment that you get when you strive for the kingdom of God. If you live as if God is at the very center of your life, that God is the center, then everything else falls into perspective. Sometimes the things that we take to be so important really, really aren't all that big when put into the proper perspective. I remember reading back in, in 2009 a story um, about President Barack Obama, and he said that he found out that he had won the Nobel Peace Prize when his two daughters came rushing into the bedroom in the morning and exclaimed, Daddy, you won the Nobel Peace Prize, and you know what else? Today's the dog's birthday. <laughs> he said at the time that that put things in perspective for him right away. And as we go about our life, many of us are, are burdened by the expectations that are placed upon us. And I'm not just talking about the hopes for presidents or other leading officials. I'm talking about the expectations that others and we ourselves load upon ourselves. We're expected to do certain things in our life at certain times. And if we don't, people may wonder what's wrong with us. If we're lucky, Lucky enough to have been born into families that say that all they want for us is to truly be happy and they actually mean it. That is Jesus' words being lived out right there. For the rest of us, it takes a long time to come to the realization that sometimes the biggest amount of expectations doesn't come from neighbors or our grandparents or teachers, it comes from ourselves. Whether we're in grade 10 and we really want to make the honor roll, or a man in his golden years looking back, wondering if he, if he did a good job raising his children, or that he led the type of life that would make his parents happy, his parents proud. Oftentimes it is our worry about unimportant things that weigh us down and make life even harder to enjoy. If you did go to that high school reunion, you might have realized that everyone does look a bit different. And then you remember, and slowly you realize who is no longer around. It is in those moments you realize how important it is to live life the best you can and give the rest to the worry over to God. Life is never what we think it will be, but God offers us a release God says that each of us is important and valued. It is just like when you came home from school with boxes of Jean Charles chocolate bars, order forms for Florida oranges and grapefruit or bread ordering sheets, and now you can even order pizza. And you may realize that your family isn't going to buy enough from you this year that you're going to win a prize like you did last year. And, but this year you're going to have to work really hard to sell them and you're going to have to go up and down the street. And no matter how much you dislike it, you're going to have to turn to your mom and your dad, your aunt or your uncle to drive you around to your neighbor's houses. And in a very comforting way, God is a lot like that. 
No matter what job we have, what tasks are before us, no matter if we can see the end or not, God, like our moms and dads, grandparents, aunts and uncles, God is there to make sure that we get it done and that we're never alone doing it. The words of 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy are also very comforting because it reminds us that the spirit of true thanksgiving is that we are all equal in God's eyes, that our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession are said by all on behalf of all. Our true gratitude comes from being able to get together through the joys and the sorrows of life in times of abundance and in times of struggles, in worship and in praise, in the God of creation who holds us all in a divine embrace that will not let us go. For some reason, as we grow up, we usually end up making life a lot more complicated. We worry more, put more obstacles in our way, set ourselves up for high expectations and forget that we cannot make it all on our own. So perhaps instead of looking back at our high school years, we need to look back further to a time of simplicity. We need to take our life lessons from kindergarten. Now some of you may recall there was a series of books that came out about 25 years ago by Robert Fulgham, a Unitarian parish minister in the Pacific Northwest of the United States, and he wrote a book called Everything I Needed to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. And maybe to be thankful and release ourselves from the bondage of expectations and lost dreams, we need the grace that comes from living a simple and God-centered life. Now in his book, Mr. Fulgham has lots of practical, simple advice that and I encourage any of you to go home and, and Google this book because it really is wonderful. But there's one line that sort of sticks out, and there's so many, but there's one line. And he says, when you go out into the world, watch for the traffic, hold hands, and stick together. And I love that. Our youth had lessons and friends, but also expectations that may or may not have all come true. But the great thing is that we can leave those ball and chains of what-ifs behind and know that God is with us, ready to offer new things in the here and now. And as one singer from the 80s said, don't worry, be happy. God says, don't be too hard on yourself. Look to me and know peace of mind. Look in me and find what you've been searching for your whole life. Search me and know that living is one great big thanksgiving. So regardless if you can still fit into your prom dress or can no longer do a handstand, or if you have fulfilled your probable destiny or found a new one along the way, remember that God shows us what is important. And the important thing in this life is to be happy and to make sure that you have some friends to laugh with and to know that the greatest thing you could ever, ever accomplish is to love with courage and abandon. And that is good news. Thanks be to God.
whoop, there we go. For a number of years now, the outreach ministry here at Barhaven United Church has been supporting the Canadian Food Grains Bank, and this year is no exception. We will be watching a video shortly about Canadian Food Grains, and also in this week's Life and Work, there's more information about this charity, and also how you can donate if you would like to do so. What would happen if you found that your plate was empty and you didn't know where your next meal was coming from? This is a situation for roughly 800 million people around the world. Why? If you live directly off the land, like many do, it might be because of a natural disaster, like flooding or extreme drought, or because you don't have regular employment due to your social status or gender or for other social reasons preventing you from accessing the most basic necessities of life. Or perhaps conflict has forced you from your home and community. Sarah is a mother of three, living with her elderly father. Her family was forced to flee her home community because of conflict and violence. After finding their way to a safer place, they suddenly had no regular access to food. Like millions of others, they lost all their normal supports, and came to rely on outside organizations like Canadian Food Grains Bank for food. Sarah lives a world away. How can support be provided to her family? When it began, the Food Grains Bank shipped grain from Canada as a response to food crises around the world. We no longer do this. Canada in general no longer provides this type of food aid. Instead, food is now purchased as closely as possible to the area of need. This is less expensive, more efficient, and ensures the most appropriate food for those in need. It is also important for supporting local farmers and food producers. Canadian Food Grains Bank works through its 15 Canadian member agencies, who in turn work with local partners in areas where food is needed. Through these partners, who understand the local language and culture, Sarah and her family can be included in a food assistance project. She might receive a food basket, some basic staple foods, and nutritional supplements. If she is able, she could participate in a Food for Work project and receive food as payment for work which further contributes to the development of her community. If she were living on farmland, she may also receive seeds, or tools, or even animals which provide food and income for the family. If Sarah is living in a place where there are good markets with available food, she could receive cash or food vouchers to be used with approved food vendors in local markets. This ensures people have access to food in the most practical and helpful way. Now, Sarah and her family can worry a little bit less about where their next meal is coming from and make plans to get their lives back to normal as quickly as possible. Food assistance is one important way that the Food Grains Bank in cooperation with the Canadian government, is providing food to the people who need it most. So however you are making your offering this day, let us take a moment to offer to God our offering and also to give thanks. So let us just take a few moments to do so.
Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Your work needs many hands to see it to fulfillment. Your work needs our trust and participation. Through our gifts this day and through our discipleship, we offer what we have and are to you. Bless all of our giving and multiply our gifts so that your vision may become reality. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, in this time of changing seasons, in this time of harvest, we give thanks for all that you have created and continue to create. For it is by your bounty and within your bounty that we live and breathe and have our being. You who knit us in our mother's womb, you know us from the inside out, from our failings and our triumphs, from our weaknesses to our strengths. Yet despite that intimate knowledge, you love us unconditionally. We thank you, God, for that gift of communion, for that gift of companionship, for that gift of forming and reforming and transforming. We lift our thanks to you. In the midst of your good creation, O Spirit, we know how our own spirits flit restlessly from one momentary interest to another, from one spotlight to another, always seeking to avoid the darkness and despair of those parts of our life. Our avoidance is just our recognition of, of how so much brokenness there is in the world and in our own lives. It hurts and we want to feel better. And so we pray for ourselves. We pray for the people sitting around us this, this day, for the people on our left and our right. We pray for families gathering for perhaps the first time after months apart. For families pulled in different directions over vaccine hesitancy. For those families that are whole and for those seeking healing. With love, we pray for those known to us that seek healing or comfort in some way this day, O oh God. Our despair and our pain sometimes overwhelm us and we yearn for your healing power, your caring touch of understanding, your comfort and your direction along the way. And always, always you answer our prayers with grace and with blessings that we can lift our hearts to you with praise. When we look at the world, O living Christ, we lament as you did for Jerusalem, knowing the tragedies and terrors and the misguided steps of the world's reality. Places and events come to mind. Afghanistan, 
Myanmar, Haiti, Eritrea, First Nations communities, poverty here and around the world, homelessness, natural disasters, war and conflict, and hate. Yet when we step back and take a long look over the centuries and the millennia, we see change. We see transformation. We see your hand at work in hearts and in hands. So thank you, O living Christ, for showing us the way, for leading us into change and into new and healthy ways of living with one another. We pray that you will continue to show us to show the world one heart at a time. And we too pledge to follow where you lead us. So take all of these prayers and hold them in your heart. And we ask this in Jesus' strong name as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Just before we leave today, I just want to offer you some more room to gather. Um, I know as we, are, as we gather together, as we leave the worship service, sometimes we just want to stand and talk and get caught up. So we've opened up the doors into the church hall. So if you'd like to continue talking and perhaps would like a little bit more room around you, just make your way into there and uh, talk for as long as you like. <laughs> so, by grace we are born into the world of God's making. By grace, we, we are given one another, we are given the good news of Christ. By grace, then, let us live out our life as neighbor, friend, steward of the earth, and as an apostle of peace. Let us then share the gift of life, the gift of peace, the gift of joy with all whom we meet.
as we go forth with the blessing of our Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And let the people say, Amen. Amen.